also um, disapproves of provisions in this bill that would make it harder to close Gitmo, which is a brilliant detention facility. It is hugely smart. I want them there so we can interrogate them there rather than bring them in here where they're going to be subject to our U.S. courts and we'll never be able to get to them. The best thing we have on our on our hands when it comes to interrogating these prisoners is time. Time. But instead, what do we do? Oh, we give them back to Qatar, where they can roam about the country with little ankle bracelets on, and we'll swap them out for a traitor and that a Bull Bergdahl. Here is Dan, WMAL. Dan, quickly, please, you're on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. Go ahead. Yes, sir. What I would like to talk about is that defense spending bill. Obama pretty much said... Hey, let's give all the terrorists the freedom that they want after hours after they killed a U.S. operator in Iraq. They killed one of our guys in Iraq, and Obama wants to let these people go. Yeah, go ahead, roam free. How about this? You want to free them? You want to shut down Guantanamo Bay? How about we pull all our troops out of Guantanamo Bay and flatten that place with a bomb that we borrow from Iran? We'll borrow a nuke from Iran and level that place and then give it back to Cuba. Listen, here's the bottom line, Dan. I thank you for your call the Savage Nation. The bottom line is, if we're going to do this, we need to do this. We need to take the gloves off, and we need to do business the old-fashioned way, not be concerned about collateral damage and the touchy-feelies. But we're way beyond that, especially with this president, so I don't know what the answer is at this point in time. I can tell you this. An organization, I think, is akin to a terrorist organization. Barack Obama was uh, given kudos to today, Black Lives Matter. Uh, you're going to hear that audio coming up on this, The Savage Nation. Also, I highly encourage you, pre-order it. It's going to be in stores. Government Zero, it comes out Tuesday. Can't wait. You can order online now, michaelsavage.com. We still have two, hour, two and a half hours to go in this endeavor, and I'm looking forward to every second of it. A lot of immigration stories in the news. What border? To our south, there is no border. It's been eroded. And the trouble and the news... And it's getting worse. We'll talk about that right here on this, The Savage Nation. Brian Sussman in for Dr. Michael Savage. Michael Savage's book, I can't wait for this one, Government Zero. I think it's going to be his biggest bestseller ever, personally. But what Savage says in this book is zero leadership, zero strategy against the Islamic State, zero military, zero education, zero culture, right on down the line. I mean, look at the stories today. Zero leadership. Look what we're getting from this White House regarding the biggest issue of the day, as far as I'm concerned, and that's dealing with ISIS. I see the pictures, you see the pictures. I see the video, you see the video. It's frightening. It's another Holocaust taking place before our very eyes. What's he doing? Zero military. Zero military. Look how he's cutting. We just talked about this. He's Today, it was made known that he's slashing the military budget. Today, he vetoed. The, the military budget, budget brought forth by the House of Representatives. Vetoed it. Zero education. There's a story in the news today. I'll just give you an example of this. There's a story in the news today that there is a resource guide that's being distributed to schools all around the United States via the Department of Education. And it has to do with making sure that all the children in this country illegally are in school. Now, who's going to pay for this? And what does this do to the overall educational quality of our schools? In this article that I'm reading, it's actually a World Net Daily article, and uh, it says this, it, it just in Atlanta alone, Atlanta alone, there are 21 dialects of Spanish that have to be taught. 21 dialects of Spanish that have to be taught. Some of these Central American children come here and they only speak Mayan. Got to find a translator. The burden that's being placed, so zero education. Now let's just go through this. We have zero leadership, zero strategy against the Islamic State, zero military, zero education, zero culture. That's the goal. That's the goal. Michael, Michael's been talking about this forever. Borders language culture. Zero. Right on down the line. When that happens, you see a nation destroyed. This is historical. You see, that's the beauty of conservatism, isn't it? We look at the world and its history and say, okay, this worked, this doesn't work, don't ever do that. This worked, we should probably try this. 
You, you have to have borders, and they need to be enforced with any nation. God instituted governments to keep us safe. So what happens? You get guys like President Obama and his ilk that are trying to destroy the American ethos with this chaotic, mass, unorganized immigration. Some would say it's actually well-organized. They desire to liquidate, what? Christianity, for starters. So the American ethos, wipe it out. Christianity, wipe it out. And yet, curiously, at the same time, they believe that they can work with Muslims. Bring them in. Mutual goals. They're all racing towards these ambitions by instituting this massive and chaotic immigration scheme, grossly expanding the welfare state, strategically demonizing Christianity, fostering rampant social, uh, social agitation. This is where we're going. This is, that's why I want to read Government Zero. Western civilization is at risk. It's true. It's true. So that's Government Zero. And we'll talk more about it. I can't wait to uh, interview Michael on my own show next week. Now listen to this. Listen to this. I, I see what's coming from this Black Lives Matter movement. I see hatred. I see, I see death. I see cops in the crosshairs getting killed. What, four now in New York City? It's a terrible thing. Black Lives Matter. And I... I, they've, they've protested here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I've heard their chants. The anti-police chants, whipping people up into a frenzy to make you believe the police are the bad guys. And so here's Barack Obama. He is saying, he's actually championing the Black Lives Matter movements. This is clip one. Take a listen. I think the reason that the organizers used the phrase Black Lives Matter is was not because they said they were suggesting nobody else's lives matter. Rather, what they were suggesting was there is a specific problem that is happening in the African American community that's not happening in other communities, um, and that is a legitimate issue that we've got to address. I, you know, here's what's happening in the African American communities, as I see it, as I see it. I look at Chicago, where they have the, some of the strictest, maybe the strictest gun control in the nation. And since tw uh, said the last four years, you've had 6,000 shootings. I see the black-on-black -black crime, the black-on-black -black murders. That, that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. You want to cure what ails them in the black community? Uh, if we're going to empower anybody, if you want our government to empower anybody, let's empower the pastors, the real Christian pastors who really understand what's going on, to start instilling family values, not welfare values, family values amongst the people, and begin to train them in the Bible so that they can understand and have a moral plumb line whereby they can live properly. If you're going to do anything, that's what I'm saying. Let's give you one more. Are you ready for this? This has to do with... Uh, well, no, I want to stay one, one more, well, just one more thing, if I may, on that. Because I'm out here on the left coast. Many of you are in New York City. It's, it's Michael's largest market. You've got this New York police officer dying after being shot in the head while pursuing a suspect. Fourth New York City police officer, right? Fourth murdered in that city in the last 11 months. This, I don't understand. I, I love our police. And you know what's really amazing, isn't it? When these protesters... When the Black Lives Matter protesters, when all these people that are spitting on the cops and calling them pigs, etc., when they're in trouble, who do they call first? They call for the police. They call for the police. And then here in San Francisco, we've got a situation with these sanctuary cities. Actually, there are 340 sanctuary cities around the country. And these sanctuary cities... Uh, I, I don't feel safe in these sanctuary cities because I know, as the case was with that terrible murder we had in San Francisco, which has been very well publicized, those of you who are paying attention to the news and you're listening to this station, this show, so you are, Kate Steinle was the girl's name in July. She's with her parents in a beautiful tourist spot, broad daylight. This is, I would regard, I, I would regard this as one of the safest places in San Francisco, quite honestly. And she gets shot in broad daylight by this guy who was purposefully in San Francisco because it's a sanctuary city. It's a sanctuary city. He's purposefully there. 
So our board of supervisors, Michael coined a phrase years ago, he calls them the board of stupid visors. Our board of supervisors unanimously approved a regulation urging local law enforcement not to comply with federal immigration authority requests. And the sheriff of San Francisco is all for it. Yes, we need to do it. In other words, they want to continue the sanctuary city policy. And when they're in there, it was a unanimous vote by this board of supervisors. And when they had their vote, the, they all get up there grandstanding. We're not going to listen to conservative media. We're not going to. And then as soon as they say they're going to pass it, the, the meeting hall erupts in cheers. And I don't know who these people are cheering. But my guess is they're probably not even from San Francisco. If anything, they're representative of various activist groups. Because when I talk to people in this city, and I'm sure it's the same wherever you live, we got a ton of liberals in the city of San Francisco. I talk to them, and man to man, they will tell you, man to woman as the case may be, whatever this is, they will tell you, they don't like the sanctuary city policies either. So why are they doing this to us? Because they love seeing us live in fear. It's, this is heinous. It's absolutely sickening. Dave's, in dub, Dave's uh, calling from WABC in New York. Dave, thanks for joining us on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael. Hey, Brian, how are you? Uh, listen, I, I fully agree with what you said about empowering the pastors. Uh, you could see that the decline of this nation uh, lines up right with when they started attacking Christianity and taking Bibles out of schools and prayer. Uh, we've lost our moral uh, beacon. We've, we've lost the, the plumb line, like you said before. Uh, so now it's, if it feels good, do it. That's the mentality, and that's why this country is suffering so much. Uh, we have a it's president right now that is anti-Christian, amongst other things, and they're really attacking anybody and anyone associated with the God of the Bible. Uh, they want to eliminate it from all of society. That's what's going on. There's no question. They are demonizing Christianity, and they will end up eventually restricting our, 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 our speech such that no one will be able to speak about the Bible any longer because it's deemed too offensive by the in crowd. That's where we're going with all of this. And we need to have a moral compass. We need the plumb line, as you just mentioned. Dave, WABC, thanks for calling. Well, okay, here's another example, if I may. This is once again Nancy Pelosi, my representative. Uh, it, the, the House of Representatives is trying, well, they've, they've, they've made some, they're trying to make alterations to Obamacare. And in the process, they're trying to defund Planned Parenthood as they're coming up with a new budget. And here she is talking about the funding of Planned Parenthood, which she says is necessary. And then, you know, this is a Catholic woman speaking on behalf of the Pope. She says this is what Pope Francis would want. I mean, basically, that's what she's saying. This is from C-SPAN. Take a listen. Instead of moving forward with all of the uh, must-do legislation that I mentioned earlier, Republicans are moving forward. Uh, with a GOP reconciliation package that once again lays the, con the groundwork for another Republican government shutdown. It's a waste of time. It will go nowhere in the Senate. Um, it'll go nowhere in the Senate, uh, maybe because we have people running the Senate without a spine. But listen to what else she says here. This is clip 19. She actually invokes the spirit of, of Francis. You ready for this clip 19, please? It doesn't have to be this way. Instead, we could be working together, recognizing a Republican Congress, a Democratic president, the ability for Democrats uh, to use their leverage uh, legislatively uh, to have compromise for the good of the American people. That's what Pope Francis told us to do said leaders should have transparency that would be wonderful openness he said he used the word this openness and pragmatism and he said we had to move forward for the good of the people these people Let's are so it. reckless all right that's enough for her i just i'm not catholic okay but i respect those who are are good catholics who walk the talk all right i i can't help but respect anybody who walks the talk the bottom line is she's trying to make you believe that St. Francis or St. Francis, that, that, that Pope Francis is uh, one who would say, don't defund Planned Parenthood. That's she's using fanciful rhetoric to make you believe that's what he would have you to have you to do. Don't defund it. 
in the name of the Pope. Unbelievable, but not really. That's Nancy Pelosi. I've been watching.